life is taught, our responses. So you've had to be looking at people and the way they've responded to certain situations for you to learn them. So it's become ingrained in you. When, when something happens, I'm going to respond this way. If someone says this, I'm going to respond this way because we've seen it so many times so we think it's a, it's a natural response. And I think it's with those people to find out what's being ingrained in their lives, their upbringing, um, the people, the direct, the people in their, their direct sphere yes. have been responding to these types of situations. My sister used to always tell me because I'd get in the car, she says, you know there's going to be a taxi on the road. Prepare yourself beforehand because you don't want to get to that place and then you get angry. So prepare yourself. You know there's going to be a taxi. You know he's going to do something on the road. Give him space. Prepare yourself. Know that he's going to stop. Give him enough space. So I think in, in different areas in our lives when we talk to people, we got to teach them to prepare for certain situations. Not to get there and then get angry. Mm -hmm. The word is all also saying says be slow to anger. Yeah. So it tells us that listen, God created us with the ability to get angry, but it says be careful. Get you need to be slow before you get to that point because I think it's you need to assess every single step of the way whether it's worth to get angry or not. And you were talking about. Anger having consequences uh, on your body, and it's true. We make ourselves sick because we get angry. Uh, I'm a prime example <laughs> again. I think these these questions, you know, you know what's going on. So you you ask me these questions. <laughs> I was reading a book from like 1967 because I was struggling struggling with the issue. That's when you post the Christian fifty. That's right, and that's why I remembered it. <laughs> So clearly, it's good. It's really good for his age. <laughs> and I was checking this book out, and it's written by a lady doctor who is a minister, and she was talking about anger and how anger affects the body. She says your response when you get angry or get into a different stage of anger, which is called rage or wrath, you lose, you lose your thought, you lose your senses, you act on things that have been probably in your subconscious, you know, you've been priming yourself all these years, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do, and when you get into that rage, you act on it without thinking about it. And what I found out through her book is that I've been carrying around anger. See, anger is an emotional response, it has a trigger and it has a target. Every, every anger has a target and has a trigger. You've got to find out what triggers you and what's a target. You could probably say, well, Pastor Jeremy, you're not, you're not an angry person. Yeah, it's because you are not my target. <laughs> Neither are you. You're not my target. So, so we've got to find out what's our target and be, and be ready for it. Because when a target comes across your path, there's going to be something that's going to trigger you. And you need to... To have also the Word of God working in you at the time because you need to start assessing the situation. Is your salvation worth it? Yeah. Is your salvation worth it to get angry and to respond and to act on something that you've been thinking on and eventually spend 20 years of your life in jail because you've acted on that rage? Yeah. Well, Sorry, Pastor Chris. <laughs> um, I think maybe just to add to it, because yeah. what I find very in interesting is that uh, Paul says in Ephesians, and he puts anger in a package which he calls works of the flesh. That's right. And he, and he adds it to things like drunkenness and all of these other things. Yeah. And, um, you know, so the, the human thinking is, this is something that's out of my control. Hmm. Except of saying, well, what I replace this anger with? And obviously Paul in there contrasts with the, the fruit of the Spirit that should be working in, inside of us. So uh, I think that's, that's a very important aspect. And also, like you rightfully said, you know, what's at the root of this? I often share the story, you know, we stayed at a house in uh, uh, Main Street, Rosettenville, and um, 
not many years after we uh, moved in, all of a sudden this fig tree started growing and I thought, well that is just fantastic, you know, we're going to have some great fruit and yeah. um, the thing would probably get about a meter, meter and a half and, uh, high and the fruit would start to develop, but before I could e even get a chance, the birds would come and just <laughs> eat it and I'd get cross and upset and, um, you know, then it drops its leaves and I decided, you know, I'm just going to take this thing out. So I cut some of the branches off and then I took my lawnmower and I just went over it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was great! It was fantastic! Yeah, until the next season! <laughs> the thing grew again! And I had to go through the same process and the next year the same process. I know you guys don't make these type of mistakes. <laughs> Until finally, I, I figured I need to do what the word says, and that is take it out at the root. Yeah. And when I did that, guess what? No more problem. Uh, so, I, I, in all of these things, you know, what is the root cause of, of these issues? Let's let's deal with that because yeah. I think one of the one of the things that um, really it gets under my skin when it comes to anger is this thing called anger management. <laughs> because all you're doing is exactly what it says. You're just managing the, the anger. You're not dealing with the anger. You're not uh, going and finding out what, what is making me angry. What, what is at the root of this problem that I'm displaying? And, and um, so I, I always tell people, you know, let's get to the bottom of this thing. Not, let's not just manage the thing because, unfortunately, like both of you said, you know, they, they might come a time where you, where you lose control. What then? What's, you know, how great is your count from 1 to 10? <laughs> <laughs> Keep getting stuck on seven. <laughs> yeah, seven. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, I, I think for me that's, that's an important point. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the same, you know, uh, Pastor Jeremy just said, we need to think about the things that have been said to us. I mean, Phyllis Diller was a comedian. Uh, she made a statement. She said, never go to bed mad. Stay up and fight. <laughs> and, you know, that just meant that she got to the place where she enjoyed her anger. Mm. Where she enjoyed it. You know, and uh, a lot of times people say things to us and it creates in us this mindset that that's who I am or that's how I respond mm. or that's how I behave. And um, it's, we constantly then rehearse our anger. Like Pastor Jeremy said, if the person does this, I'm going to react mm -hmm. like this. If they do this, I'm going to say that. And we rehearse anger in our lives. And it's, you know, people say, yeah, but I just lost control. That's utter nonsense. Mm -hmm. Because you're screaming like a wailing banshee at your wife and your children. And then the pastor phones and says, hello, pastor. <laughs> How are you now? Everything's fine. Oh, blessed of the Lord. Thank you. What nonsense. Mm. Uh, you know, I always have to confess my sin. And um, you've heard the story before, but the one day I was at uh, Pick and Pay. Um, I was purchasing a couple of items. Karen and uh, myself, we had this Rottweiler puppy. And I went to go buy some things for, for my puppy at uh, the pick and pay. And I bought the items, I think there were four items. And uh, they just started scanning the thing, no longer punching in. I know some of you don't know that, but before they just scanned items, they actually had to type in the numbers. And uh, they just started scanning the thing and three of the four items scanned incorrectly scanned a higher price and so what happened is I said to the lady that's wrong she said no you have to speak to the manager 
he was standing in a little wooden box beyond the, the tilts and so I finished paying and I went to go stand there and he was politely on a telephone call. He saw me standing there, didn't even acknowledge me. And um, all these words that had been spoken over my life previously about, no, gee, you know, you just explode and you just get... Those things came to the fore and I, I could feel the blood pressure going up. And eventually I said to Carol, look, take the kids and go to the car. Which was my first mistake. Because <laughs> in my brain I was rehearsing my anger. And I knew that if I sent her to the car, um, she wouldn't be there saying, Sean, it's just a test. It's just a test, Sean. Just... And so I sent her away and the guy got off the phone, put it down and said, what can I do? And I explained to him. Very calmly, I might add. And he came and he leaned on the counter like this, leaned close to me, and with stale coffee breath, said to me, Is it such a big problem? Well, at that point, I'd rehearsed my anger. I proceeded to grab him <laughs> across the counter. Now, I'm a pastor serving in a ministry. I grab him and all I can picture is how his nose is going to break <laughs> as I hit him with my forehead. And I start pulling him towards me like this and I'm about to give him a Glasgow kiss. And there's a tap on my shoulder. This guy's eyes are this big. I turn around, I'm still holding him like this. I turn around, there's a lady from the church. She says, Pastor, <laughs> you mustn't fight with the people. I very gently placed him back over the counter, picked up my items, and I walked out of the store. I learned a valuable lesson on that day. First of all, don't rehearse your anger. Mm -hmm. If you rehearse it, that's exactly what is going to come out. The second thing that I learned that day is keep people around you that help you to deal with the situation.